Welcome to Holy Fuck. Holy Fuck. Holy Fuck. Two gals on the prowl for enlightenment, sex, and all things holy. Holy Fuck. Each week, beauty alchemist and transformational coach and speaker, Catherine McClelland, and spiritual healer and life coach, Krista Kim, discuss navigating spiritual consciousness in a real human body. Stumbling through dating, relationships, and everyday life, all while maintaining a fucking sense of humor. (laughs) Hey, Krista. Hey, Catherine. Here we are, live on video. Well, we're not live to you, but we're alive to us, though. We're alive. We're alive today. (laughs) We're on video. This is a first. This is a first. First for us. So we've got dogs. We got flies. (laughs) Some barking. Air conditioning. Thank God, because it's hot as hell in Ohio today. (laughs) So we're here to. Try on something new because we keep asking you guys to do something new. So here we are doing something new. We have our vanity light. Uh. We have our curtain. (laughs) Uh. We're all set. So we are going to talk about something other than ourselves and our video today. We have a great topic. We're very excited about it. It is about ourselves. (laughs) Well, it's about ourselves and how that relates to you. But you're right. It is always about us. But this topic, uh, we should probably start with our book. It came from this book. Yes, it voila, did. it did not. We researched it through this book. It's not a deep study, but this book <laughs> called not. The Sex Issue is a three page chapter. It's not super deep. At it's all. not a it's deep. pretty casual. It's pretty casual, but it's fun. It's a fun read and it certainly sparks some conversation. Cocktail yeah, party conversation. Although they do warn you not to mix drinking and friends with benefits, as that usually results disastrously. And that's and what you, you we're know talking why? about today. <laughs> Friends with benefits. <laughs> Friends with benefits and disasters at cocktail parties. So we'll come back to that. But right now, we just wanted to see this book. It's written by Goop and the editors of Goop. And forward is, of course, by Gwyneth Paltrow, well, who course. is the queen of Goop. So anyway, we want you to see this. We're happy to have it. It's a, a light study on a big subject, and it's fun. Yeah. So Friends with t- benefits. T- 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 How many of us have them? How many times have you tried this? Now, we're going to delineate between the difference of when it happens, say, at a college frat party or, say, at a uh, Uh, drinking (laughs) party or if it happens because you're actually setting it up because you know you want to try this with someone or you have an idea about it or if it happens... Without a lot of setup, even if you aren't drinking, and the disasters of that. So we're playing with this topic. Some of you may know a lot about it and have had your own disasters, in which point, feel free to comment below. (laughs) Um, And if you don't and you're just here to listen, very cool. We're happy to have you, and let's get started. And this is getting started because... um, (laughs) How did this topic come up, Krista? Nurture man. Nurture man. And, you know, um, in the last episode, I think I just, we were talking about something completely different. I just kind of threw out there like, oh, yeah, Nurture Man and I aren't together again. And, you know, I went on with the rest of the topic. Yeah, and, you did that. Um, and some more unraveling has happened in the last week. So, um, you know, Nurture Man and I, I feel like the situation was set up super consciously from my perspective and I felt like all the rules were put out there. I felt like. But were they? The, Tell us. Well, okay. I don't even know if it was rules. I think it was yeah. more just like both people being very honest with where they were at at the time. So and I, maybe both people being as honest as they knew they could be at the sure. time without maybe necessarily examining deeper. Sure. I don't think either one of us, um, you know, intentionally lie or try to deceive the other person. Right. I think in the moment we're always telling our truth to ourselves and the other person as what we, we know, know of it, it in that moment. Yes. Right. So what could possibly have gone wrong, Krista? Well, <laughs> everything was chugging along, fun, and um, I just started having this feeling of, uh-oh, he's having more feelings than I'm feeling for him. Meaning, I'm friendly, we're going out, we're hanging out, we're having dinners, we're doing errands and stuff together. And he's paying Friends. for a lot of stuff, right? Yes, but I was actually 
very conscious of paying half the time as well. And nice. that was part of my keeping the boundary. Okay. Meaning like, as, and, and this is where him and I think there was an early struggle because he was wanting to pay all the time mm. to kind of, I th- perceived it as In hammering the- home that we're more than friends with benefit. And I was intentionally like, nope, I'm paying for this meal because I was trying to say, no, we're friends and friends wouldn't, you know, he, if Keep we were just friends, meals. he wouldn't be paying for me all the time. Well, and let's refer to our book here, our handy dandy book when we were looking up our chapter. One of the things that is very, very important is that often where these things go badly is if one of them is using it as a way to get into romantic partnership and one of you is not. So it's, it's, I think we can all remember this scenario of one of us is we, maybe we even the first time it's clearly just friends with benefits. Right. And then maybe it changes. So one person starts to have feelings Mm -hmm. or generate feelings from themselves for the other person that are no longer friends. Like they, they called it in this book, catching feelings, which is an interesting term. But nonetheless, you know, you sleep with someone a couple times. Sometimes your heart starts to open. You start to bond. You start to have, and possibly for women more than men, because it tends to be that women have a little bit more of a relational kind of connection with sex, and maybe men have more of a, they can do it more easily as a event and move on, move back to friendship. Well, what would you think happened there? I think that Nurture Man, the first time we were together, I think that maybe for both of us, we were toying around with, could this be something? This is months oh, and months and months. Be, this is the first could iteration. This be romantic. Of us. Could this be romantic? Ah. So in that case, I don't. It wasn't set up as necessarily friends with benefits. Oh, that's I think I said, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm just coming out of a relationship. I'm, you know, I kept I'm it experimenting, very light. Right. right? But there still wasn't a um, an end game there. There wasn't a no. Where this is just friends. It was like seeing it out. Then once Golden Eyes came back in the picture. Nurture man we're not I. talking about golden eyes again, no, we're right? Because we know how much he loves that. Check last week's episode if you want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so when that iteration of you know Nurture Man and I went away, then when it came back the second time, I was way more clear and like this is. And friends. I think it was connected to a conversation about an open relationship with Golden Eyes. Is that possible? Well, it was that um, that relationship was kind of completing, but not really. And it was still confusing. Kind of confusing. And so yeah. I just said, you know, I really, you know, I have space for friendship and sex every once in a while, but that's all I have. And then it went away again, that relationship. So Which one? The oh, Golden Nurture Man. Well, both went away. But oh, okay. I'm just saying when I stopped seeing Nurture Man the second time, by the third time I came back, I was like, definitely just friends. Right. Definitely just friends. And how long ago was that? Well, that was probably two two months ago. Okay. So yeah. in the last two months for you, you've been super so clear. So clear. Like and so, yet, so clear. There have been house projects. Yeah. Because he's been great to you. He has been fantastic to me. And the thing is, is though that's what friends do. Like I have a best girlfriend and we do house projects together and we help yeah, each other when things need to be moved or I'm not so good about that. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I will put the curtains up for you though. Right, well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so, I was looking at him as like he's doing the same things for me that I do with some of my other friends. So, I was keeping it in I thought that was friend zone. And I was constantly checking in with him and saying like, "Hey, are you okay? Like this is just friends were keeping it light and he would be like don't worry about me i'm fine yeah i'm that's, looking out for myself so my right there might be a little red flag right possibly we don't have but, any red flags around here we should get them so we can raise them when but you kept saying like he's responsible for his feelings oh, he is responsible. i can't be responsible for his feelings i can but i still was checking in doing but my what due he, diligence right okay but the the one little worm right? In the tequila, maybe, or the (laughs) red flag is him saying, don't worry about me. I'm taking care of myself. He wasn't actually saying, don't worry, I'm not getting attached to you. And I think it's possible. And this is a lovely man we're talking Mm -hmm. about. And this is the book, our sex book sort of refers to this as one person starts to feel romantically connected. Right. And even if now, who hasn't said this? No, no, I'm good. 
I'm good when mm-hmm. you're actually starting to feel because you don't want to lose the connection you have. Right. And so you're just thinking, well, if I stay a little longer, this will make this into something. Now, who hasn't done that? Like you, even if it's, none of us have ever done this. You've been out at a bar, <laughs> you've been drinking and you have sex with someone. Even if it was just sex, you might, if you're in the department of looking for a romantic relationship, you might go, well, he was a nice guy. Right. And we had great sex, so maybe I should hope. And then turn the story into, oh, this could possibly be romantic. Meanwhile, he's like, nah. Or vice versa, the woman could be, nah, and he's, oh, this could possibly be romantic. Now, you had that other relationship. It was very clear to you, partly because <laughs> of the person's age. I think there was something about that. Um, yeah. So, but you like tracked him down and you told him how it was, like really clearly. Really right? clear. We have an but, episode on that sometime last year. You can listen if you want. Yeah. I mean, that one was, I feel like it was easier because the age gap was so much bigger than. How much was it? 20 years? Big enough. <laughs> All right. Big enough, girl. <laughs> Come but on, that's the was, fun part. Then they get to hear about that. <laughs> but it was so big that I haven't had a twenty-year difference yet. I wasn't feeling like I needed to care to Lower. him as much. You know, like I wasn't like, oh, he's going to fall in love with me and want to like have a relationship for the rest of our lives. I was really like, he's so young, like he's got his whole life ahead of him to have children <laughs> and marriage and do all that stuff. And with someone here's else. to you, Mrs. <laughs> Robinson. Oh, it has I'm to be sorry. Robertson since my maiden name is Robertson. Okay, here's to you. That's <laughs> way too close for comfort. Okay. <laughs> We're going to be, so, oh, hi, it's going to be in the paper next week. Ms. Robertson. So with him, yes, I went and I was like, this is it. This is what we're doing. Duh, do you agree to these rules? <laughs> you did. And he was like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> like, when and do we get in? Get no out of problems. Here. No problems. Like, there's no, like, I see, we see each other out occasionally. And it's like, hey, hey, there's no heart attachment. But him and I also weren't going and doing errands together and no. going to do dinner and everything. So we're friends. But, like, literally... The benefits. Sort of friends. <laughs> yeah, it was more like we're benefits with the friendship. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way. We're benefits we're friend with a little friendship friend on the side. Yeah. You know, and we know from our study of other books and things, there are lots of different ways to have relationships. And there are people who are committed to having lots of sexual partners who do make this stuff work. And this book actually makes the point, and you and I are clearly knowing this, is the more time you spend setting it up carefully, the more likely you are. To not have it blow up in your face. But that's why I'm so disappointed I because, know. you know, I did say, I feel like every single week I was like, hey, like he would even start saying to me, like, I love you. And I would just go like, oh, uh, smile, right? Red, like, where's uh, my red flag? I'm sorry. I know. But I would say, Do I don't have those flag? feelings for, like, I would say, I don't have those feelings but don't for change. you. And I think in his mind was just like, we'll give it time. Yeah. And this, you know, Krista's still hurting. She's just got a little closed heart right now. And she'll and wake he, up to the beauty she, of me. And wake, you do see how beautiful he is. Absolutely. It's just not in you. It's not going to be that relationship yeah. for me. And I know you've said that plenty of times. I've said it plenty of times. And so the culmination of it kind of came when um, – he was gone for a while, and I could just tell that when, as his return was getting closer imminent. and closer, yes, his return was imminent, I could tell there was just a seriousness in his voice, like mm. even building out the future a little bit of like, hey, next fall, let's go do this. And I was just like, hey, let's keep it right here in the present. <laughs> like <laughs> that, you know, that felt yeah. like building the future too much. And um, it was. And so I kind of did something that I don't know whether it was nice or not, but I was trying to be kind. And and in my trying to be kind, I said, hey, you know, I am going to start dating people. And he was like, huh? And he was really shocked. Did you do that that. text message? Well, yeah, because we're in two different (laughs) countries at that time. And so... I know, but it, it had to be done. It literally like had, to be, like done. had to be done. I feel like something. I had to say, and it wasn't even that I had somebody that I wanted to go on a you date with. You were just with. trying to make I the boundary clear. Trying to make the boundary clear of like, 
this might not be happening now, but it's going to be happening. So I was just trying mm-hmm. to start, op- you know, open up that conversation. And Nurture Man's always said, like, please just be honest with me. Yeah. Tell me how you feel. Then I can make a decision for myself. I love you. I care about you. It's going to be fine. As long as we're honest, all good. And so I was really trusting that and trusting that I could say my truth and that, you know, the outcome would still be okay. Yeah. And this is the tricky part because... None of us want to admit certain times of parts of our vulnerabilities. None of us want to admit that we're hoping someone's going to fall in love with us because that's pretty out there in terms of a vulnerability, right? Mm-hmm. And no one actually wants to admit we're hoping someone isn't going to fall in love with us because it sounds sort of arrogant and that kind of thing. But the truth is that's what's mostly happening. So, you know, the question is, the question we get to play with now is now there are hurt feelings, Clearly, mm-hmm. his response was to go away. So uh, he ghosted me. So he this ghosted is the- Chris is the ghosty girl. <laughs> I'm so sorry, honey. This is it, well. It's interesting because it's happened you have two twice. white dogs that ghost I you do, all I the time. Too. <laughs> but you know, two relationships within two months where a man ghosts. I'm like, huh, interesting. This is something that I really have to look at. Obviously, it plays into the whole abandonment thing. Yeah, and it, her abandonment thing, my which abandonment is her theme of my issue life. Is, and it's just, so there's this part of like, is he ghosting because he's so hurt? Or is he ghosting because he knows it's my thing and this is the way to really hurt me? Is it that, oh, if he pulls away, in, is he doing it in hopes that I'll miss him so much that I'll change my mind? Well, is like, that happening? But he's not responding. No, no. Is it happening that you're changing your mind? Like you're realizing how much you love him and you're thinking, oh, gosh, I was really wrong. I do have feelings for this person and now I'm going to go find him. And I have a ton of feelings for him, but they are friendship feelings. So I feel like really I just warm, lost loving. my, like, you know, I lost, like your best friend. I lost my best friend. So two people in one week. Two best friends. Yeah. Two boyfriends. Two boyfriends and my best friend. Yeah. So that's so, a lot. You have the dog still. Great. <laughs> <laughs> tricky stuff. Really yeah. tricky stuff. And, you know, it is really interesting how no matter how well you think you set that up, mm-hmm. you do know, and I know that you know because we've talked about it, that there was some growing feeling on his side. Now, if we could just bring back in Rico Suave for a second. He hates oh. this, but we're going to do it. Do we have to? Yes. Okay. If for we what could just, purpose? <laughs> yeah. The purpose is that... He tried to tell you the same thing Mm -hmm. for a very long time. And in some ways, I would say that I felt like he was responsible for not having been as responsible about how you were interpreting his actions. Yeah, I think that situation is cloudy because we did not start off as friends, there was never a friendship between Golden Eyes and I. Well, it's interestingly like, enough, you said the same thing about you and Nurture Man. You said we started. No, with, we were friends for a long time. Oh, 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 Nurture okay. And I had but been when friends. you started being sexual, there was a relationship possibility. I'm just saying. I think it's a little bit of a similar thing. I, I see it completely different. Right? Okay. Okay. Golden Eyes, Rico, whoever the fuck his name is. We were lovers. We were boyfriend and girlfriend. We were committed relationship. Then yeah. we weren't. And, you know, we've gone through that cycle of in, we're out, we're in, we're out. So to go back at some point and say, okay, can we just be friends with benefits? I knew I did not want that. I was very clear that I did not want yeah. that. And mm-hmm. he was in the place of that's what he wanted. And I could not hear him, but he was also giving a lot of mixed signals because sometimes – he did say he loved me, and other times he did. You know, it was just like, well, and how much? How do I love you? And you know, again, you have to. We have to keep looking at this. Like, we do love our friends. I tell my friends all the time, I love mm-hmm. them. And when do we say it? And how do we say it? We just have because to watch. of well, because of that um, scenario with Rico Suave. That's why I was so clear with Nurture Man of of you didn't say you loved I didn't him. say all of those things. I didn't do things that would lead on. Mm. Or if we were doing something that was intimate, I made sure that you know there was I paid the bill or I said mm. ahead of time. You know this doesn't mean this. Yeah. So clearly, just what we say doesn't actually change the fact that people can get their feelings hurt. So because they can't, I feel like they can't hear it. 
Yeah, you know, like nurture just like man you couldn't, couldn't hear it. it, just like I couldn't hear it, which is such a great lesson because I'm saying all the things and it's literally not being interpreted by him in the way I'm saying it. Yeah, and it's really a great lesson in life. And that's why Friends with Benefits is so tricky because many, many, many times it's set up where one of the person, one of the persons, one of the people <laughs> is actually interested. So for yeah. me, I had this kind of relationship I don't know, a year and a half ago. And I was dating for the purpose of finding a relationship. Mm -hmm. And I'm very sure while we did not communicate about it, this was not a great communication not a conscious relationship. setup. Uh, I, I consciously had sex with him knowing that he had <laughs> said to me, I'm not available. At this point in my life, I have nothing to give a woman except I'll take her out. If we have a great time, we have sex, that's great with me. Mm -hmm. And he actually came to apologize to me because we had gone out on a date and it had gotten sexy. somewhat sexy. And he was apologizing because he had assumed that I would want it to be romantic. Mm. And when he apologized to me, I was actually very cool with, oh, no, I'm okay. I, I'm actually interested. I had never had a real friends with benefits relationship. So I was like, well, no, I'm all right. If you want to do that again. It was very funny because he was so gentlemanly and so careful. And he was like, I really want to apologize because there was some alcohol involved. <laughs> Just maybe. <laughs> and he really said, you know, I know I'm not available. So I apologize for crossing if I've crossed any of your right. boundaries because you think it was a date and da, da, da. So that was really clear. And I was like, well, you know, I'm actually kind of still interested. I'm okay with what happened. And, you know, let's see what happens in the future. And, you know, within about 10 minutes, he asked me out again. Mm. And it was funny. We had a really nice connection. And we weren't really friends. So we were in More benefits than friends. But we had more benefits than yeah. friends. And then uh, what did happen, because I was looking for a relationship, not right. with him necessarily. I was playing a game of dating and wondering and all that. But because I was looking for a relationship, I actually started to get my feelings engaged. Mm. My story is he did too. And then he realized, oh, yeah, wait, because he's a man and he's <laughs> way more clear about this stuff, I don't have what it takes. And when men say stuff to us, we girls... We got to listen because we so he pretend, said to you, I don't got what it takes. Yeah, he does. He said, I don't got what it takes to be in relationship. But if you want to go out, we want to have some fun. I'm totally Could you down. hear that though when he said, I don't have what it takes? No. Oh. No, that's what I'm saying is I, well, no, at first I did. But mm -hmm. then as my feelings grew, I thought, well, maybe his feelings are growing too. So you did, you're doing, you did what nurture man, what was happening with him. It's like he was cool with the way it was in yeah, the beginning. Exactly. And he, he did was happy that we just got to spend time together and he had someone to go do things with. I I truly believe that. But once that switch goes, oh shit, I think I'm in love with this person. Then it goes into this like holding phase where the person who's falling in love is just like, if I can just sit back and if I can just be cool enough yep. and if I just can be just cool not be too needy. And not be and demanding not be and not be needy. Well, guess what? We're all needy. Right? <laughs> but in that, <laughs> yeah. I was really that made me trust him even more that he wasn't pushing. Because how right. many times did I say he's not pushing all his stuff on me? And it, I felt the safest in that relationship that I've ever felt because I felt like I could do and say anything I wanted. Yeah, you were that, really good friends. Yeah, and he would always just say like, hey, I hear you and I understand. Until the time came where I said I had to be really hard and say I want to date other people yeah that's tricky because I it was to the point that I knew that everything I was saying wasn't landing so that was, was where the, you took another level of responsibility yes. and, and it's important that you did because you actually finally said something that got through yes and and sometimes let's think about this ladies sorry about that I just whacked my mic um is there are times when we know that what we're doing is actually not going through Right, because right. I there was some, uh, you know, the couple of weeks prior to him leaving to his trip, I was starting to go, oh, no. He's starting to say things that are a little bit mm, relationship. Let's and, and, spend Christmas together. <laughs> well, and, and we've had that th that um, sentence of every relationship is a relationship, right? right. Which so it is. We knew we were in relationship in some way. Yeah. He just had future on it, and I had right now. Yeah, and— 
the truth is he was developing feelings that were romantic towards you and you were not. That's it. Right. And so when you said, I want to date other people, there was no way for him to mishear that. Right. And, you know, everybody in the situation let themselves cross in certain ways. And, and maybe it was only two weeks, but there were two weeks where the, it got super gray. Mm -hmm. I know for me with this guy... He doesn't have a name yet. That's, <laughs> darn it. Hmm. I almost said one. And I was like, oh, oh no, don't away. say that one. Because <laughs> I, I almost said that one, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're just going to leave that alone for right no now. Name. No name. No name. No <laughs> name. Um, it's okay. But anyway, so with this guy, I did recognize that I, I had shifted and my feelings had changed. And then we had what I would say was a blow up. And... Mm. It was partly based on that because my feelings were so available to be hurt. Mm -hmm. And then he went away, ghosted, like, oh, yeah. and And seven months later, came back possibly for, to see if he could. A booty call? <laughs> have another booty call. <laughs> he went away so badly, no booty calls. Right. Never again. So I'm okay with Nurture Man saying, I'm not available to be in sure. relationship in that way. And I was prepared for that. Like he had always said, I need he needs the information so he can make the decision and yeah. see how he feels. So I totally respect his decision sure. to not want to continue being intimate or being in relationship in that way. What I'm not okay with is the way in which it's going down, the whole ghosting thing and the not talking about it, because we really haven't had a sit down kind of completion talk around it. It's just he and I get it. Yeah. He's upset. He's hurting. I have compassion for that. I understand that. And we're friends and we care about each other. And there should, we should be able to have the conversation of, I know you're hurting. I'm hurting. This well, is right now happening. he doesn't care about you. He doesn't right care now about he's me. Caring but about guess himself. what? That doesn't leave a lot of room for me to go back and be friends in the future with him. Well, and I'm going to try, I'm going to try not to go <laughs> into that, but well, I don't try. I don't try. I don't it trust is, anymore because if if you're my friend and we have plans and we're supposed to do something together and then you just never show and then never contact me again and then you come back three months later and well, say you want to have friends, sex with me first. I'm well, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> so hard. try not to have sex with me. Okay, but you know what I mean. Like yeah. if you had trespassed me in that way, why would I want to go back and be friends with you? It'd be very hard. To trust you again. You'd have to be a to particular kind of friend that right. you would really be able to put a lot on the line and have a very deep communication about what happened yeah. and really hear each other. And it it may be that he needs some time. And it would be great if he could say, Krista, I need some time. Mm -hmm. But maybe he can't. Maybe he really was fully invested and it's going to take him a while to pull himself out of the story and to stand tall and be able to feel free to be connected to you again. He's got he's got some story about he was wronged. You can tell. Mm -hmm. And so can you love him because you're his friend? Can you love him anyway? I can love him anyways. And I just, I feel betrayed. I feel mm. disappointed. I feel, actually, I feel really lied to. Because I feel like part of the reason I trusted him so much and engaged with him so much is because he did say how much he could hold for me and how open mm. he wanted me to be. It's like he opened up this space in me where I exposed my entire being to him. Mm. And then all of a sudden, because I don't feel the same way, that's no longer available. And it, so it feels like I was just duped, duped into... <sighs> Yeah, well, what if, but what if, I mean, I know you're hurting, and now both of you are, right? Mm -hmm. So both of you are hurting, and I know that's true, but what if you could just give him some space? You could just be like, wow, if I woke up one morning and, well, maybe you do know this, maybe you do know this with Rico Suave, that the final, not the very final time, but the time even just before that things went south, there was a lot of hurt and pain in your part. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's a pattern that he has, and maybe this is a repetition, and maybe this has really hit him in the gut. Mm -hmm. And, you know, is it possible for you to just hold? 
even though and work with your feelings yeah i have no though, choice but to right. do that and that's what i'm doing but um you know i i needed some completion so i just left him a long ass message telling him all of my feelings mm -hmm. apologizing loving him saying i loved him but just not in that way but feeling like I didn't want to be punished for that and that that's beautiful because that, I do feel like there's a punishment aspect happening right now and I don't necessarily feel like that's fair mm -hmm. and I can't ever see myself doing that to him mm, and yeah um, well we are women and they are men and they we handle things differently but he sold himself as something different I get it but now he's getting to know himself <laughs> even better <laughs> like he'll probably never do, try this again right yeah. and I, you know what I well, yeah, well here we go know. so here we're we talking go. about friends with benefits is it worth it that's this whole conversation is was it worth it to me when my feelings got engaged actually no mm -hmm. I I think that some of you will remember that this was what resulted in um, the whole episode <laughs> called Catherine's Vagina, um, which is is when he went away, was when I had something that showed up in my body that arguably could have possibly come from this friendship Can arrangement. Can VD Man? <laughs> VD Man. Oh, my God. No, we can't call it. Yeah, yeah. I Valentine's don't know. Day. Guy. Valentine's Day Massacre. Um <laughs> Yeah, that's very funny. So is it worth it? Is it worth it to play these games, to have this kind of connection? It's tricky. I think that's the most important thing we can say is that it's tricky. Well, because now I'm frustrated because now I've You have no tried... one to have sex with? Yes. <laughs> She's really that's very that you're most and mad about. It, it kind of is. It's like I miss having a safe partner to have sex with and to have some intimacy with. Even mm. if it's not the love of my life or going to be that, I miss not having that available sometimes. And But you I, would be okay with that if he actually just came back to you and said, I can't do that anymore. It's not, it's not, it's not nurturing to me yes. to do that. Like yes. all I did was nurture you, but I wasn't nurturing me. I realize right. that now. So I can definitely go back into friendship with him. I mean, I would love that. I would love for us to still be able to go out to dinner and hang and do all of the stuff we were doing. Yeah. And I still think that that can happen down the line as long as he doesn't continue too much longer with this ghosting in the the punishment aspect because that's where it starts getting damaging and i don't and you're feeling you're feeling punished by him i'm feeling punished and i don't feel like i deserve it because i feel like i said it all and so i get that he's probably punishing himself for not hearing like he's probably going back right now and going up oh, yeah she did say that she did say that and he's having yeah, i suppose you could be listening <laughs> It's I not doubt what, it. That's, yeah, that's probably <laughs> but, not what's But happening. I'm okay if he is because there's nothing I'm saying here that I haven't said to him. Yeah. Or, or that I'm ashamed of. Yeah, I get it. I'm, I've done this relationship with him the most authentic and honest that I've ever done in my entire life. Right. So, so maybe friends with benefits mostly doesn't work. Is Maybe that's the kind of the key and the message is – Okay, you can try this, but, you know, pull up your big girl panties and your big boy chonies and be really careful about who you try this with. Because in this situation, telling the total truth or what you both experienced as the total truth still resulted in hurt, hurt feelings, feelings and pain and suffering for both people. And I, because I also know I could not have done the friends with benefit with Rico Suave. There's no, 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 no. way because oh, and there's, I loved him. And yeah. so that was just never going to be an option for me. Even an open relationship. Even an open me. relationship. I'm just not going to be able to do it. I feel like I could have an open relationship with someone like Nurture Man because the attachment isn't so thick that it wouldn't be. It, it was, it's just more casual. Yeah. And so yeah. it would allow for the comings and goings. Nurture Man, I mean, Rico Suave not going to happen. Yeah. Like just couldn't. So I look at, okay, now what's on the horizon for me? It Cause now I'm like, well, this kind of sucks because now it's like either casual dating relationship, sex, sex, which just kind of feels empty at this point. 
Uh, yeah, so I'm like, I don't even know where to go next. Yeah, it's interesting because you just pointed out a gray area for us all to think about is like there is attachment with the sex that you were having, but it isn't so much attachment that it's relationship. Right. And so you felt so loved and cared for by him. The thing for him to work for, look at here is he was, like we said this before, he was providing so much nurturing and so much care to you that he may have been not providing for himself and his needs Mm -hmm. that he ended up, you felt great. I mean, who hasn't had that happen in even regular relationships that you actually are committed to where suddenly you realize your partner's been way out of balance for a week and you haven't noticed because they're doing so many great things for you. And you're like, oh, they feel really like left out or they feel really unromanticized or unnurtured and they're thinking about leaving. You feel them start to pull away. When hasn't that happened? That happens. I mean, I think it's a good thing that he goes back and takes care of his needs because he was giving so much in my direction. And, you know, I, it's not that I wasn't giving to him too and doing things for him. It was reciprocal, but he had a lot more energy to give. He has less people to take care of. Right. So I'm like, I'll take as much care and nurturing as somebody wants to give me because I'm like depleted. <laughs> <laughs> like, take care of me. Yeah, take care of so me. So I will never be, I mean, I will never be able to give to him or love him as much as he does for me just because of the nature of my life. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. And and I, the bottom line is it would be enough for him if you were in love with him and it was romantic. It would be enough for him if I wasn't wanting to date or have sex yeah, with other that's people. That's what I mean. He could he could continue doing because it's it's not the truth. I mean, let's right. be realistic. That's why. So here's something to include in your package when you're talking <laughs> to friends with benefits: is I will be dating if I want other people because you're not my person. So there was a time, even like really early on, like a mm, two months ago, where I remember him saying, "Oh." This mutual f- girlfriend of ours like asked him out or asked him to be her date at like a wedding or something. So it wasn't like a date date, but it was like, hey, come to yeah. this event with me. And they're just friends. And he turned her down and he made a point of telling me that he turned her down because and he said, I just wouldn't feel right going. Mm. And in that moment, I said to him, and I was, this was me kind of um, trying to Trying, trying to, to forward that, your agenda. Exactly. And I said, oh, my God, you should totally go. That would be fun. Like, I wouldn't have a problem with you going. Like, no, it wouldn't hurt my feelings. You know, I said all of those things saying, like, hey, feel free to go do that stuff. But I knew he was kind of implanting in my head, like, hey, he wouldn't be okay if I went and did those things. And that was kind of clue number one. And, um, yeah. Oh. Red flag. Yeah. <laughs> So what was starting to happen right before he left to go out of town is I noticed that when we would be out and people, or if I was out by myself, people would say, hey, where is Nurture Man tonight? Like, and I'd be like, I don't know. We're, we're just friends. And I kept finding myself saying that to everybody because uh. people were starting to see us as a couple. And that made me feel actually bad for him. That because then I felt like, oh, everybody's seeing us as that couple, and it's going to look bad if I were to go on a date and every now everyone sees me out with somebody else and they're going to think I'm somehow cheating on him or right. being deceptive. So I was kept trying to say to everybody, no, no, we're just friends, we're just friends. Right. But obviously, it was not appearing that way out in public, right? And so that was why I was needing, I started going, okay, I've really got to start dialing it back, shutting this down. <laughs> How do you a bit. dial back? Okay, yeah. dial it back. Yeah, well, this is uh, a fabulous conversation, Krista. <laughs> and I know that, as you can see, in just our two or three experiences that we're talking about here, this is really tricky, this is really tricky stuff. So guidelines, yeah. no alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do it with alcohol, just know that's it's probably it. not going to work out. <laughs> And yeah. really, like, the best, best ways that these things work out, according to the experts, is talk. First, literally that one time with Krista, she went into a bar and sat and said, do you want to have sex? These are the like 10 rules. I remember it distinctly. (laughs) Don't remember what podcast it was on, but it was there. And he said yes, and he abided by the rules. Yeah. And that's how you know. And I guess 
in the final analysis, if you were to compare those two experiences, you know right away that the second one was not a bit like the first one. No. And so now you have a place to go, okay, so we're giving this to some of us all need to learn from experience. So we don't object when everyone has their own experience. But if you'd like to learn from us instead, it's, the friends of benefits just doesn't it's a tricky, work. it's a tricky For boundary. And uh, in those two situations, it hasn't. With the one person, mm-hmm. it did. It worked fine. But you aren't really friends. You're really just with benefits. Right. <laughs> You're right. like, if I see you in a bar and I'm alone, <laughs> we'll have some benefits. Yeah, we can talk. But if I'm with someone, no. don't talk to me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I think the funny, I think the it, most interesting part to consider is, is it actually possible to really be friends? Like in some of the other studies that we've read, uh, they talk about friends with benefits, but they talk about groups of people who change partners and they call it friends with benefits, but are they actually really good friends? Right. Because that's where this got sticky. And I I started stepping into kind of like best friend territory. Best friend and then lover and best right. friend and then oh doesn't that mean that we have something together right because it, it's very hard when there's a man sleeping in your bed to just sit there and be like good night uh, for me it's just like <laughs> there's this like that was a, pulsing yeah. and it's like and it's so then it just happens and it's fun it just happened it just happened, <laughs> it just, it just <laughs> happened over and over and over <laughs> Anyway, lots to think about. We love you. We love having this podcast. Thank you so much for subscribing so that we can do this all the time because we love doing it. We love doing it. Sex and love and rock and roll. (laughs) Peace out. Spread the love, (laughs) y'all. Spread the love. Bye. Bye.